Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely black and gold coffee table and this is part of my doll's house living room furniture and for this project I've used a Besh wood and that's spelled O-B-E-C-H-E and I've used a 1.5mm or 1 16th of an inch and a strip wood that is 5mm 13 64ths of an inch but if you can't get hold of a besh do have a look at my working with wood um, video which will give you some ideas of other woods that you can use a wood glue as you know by now I like this gorilla wood glue it bonds really quickly black paint for the top coat and I've used this Rustin's quick dry gold paint for the gold underneath it gives us this nice aged effect and then to finish it off a, a quick dry varnish or but any sort of clear varnish and this is a satin finish which I think looks nicer on this piece than a, a really glossy finish craft knife I use this Swan Morton knife which takes a size 10a blade always put a new blade in at the start of a project or if it begins to catch and drag along the wood it means it's becoming blunt a steel wool obviously for measuring and for cutting the wood along with the craft knife nice sharp pencil for accurate marking I've used a mitre block and saw for cutting the strip wood you won't get through the 5mm um, thickness with a craft knife so use the saw there and obviously the straight cut along the centre there. Cocktail sticks are used to apply glue. I put, dispense the glue onto a piece of card and then use these to apply the glue and also for removing excess glue from along the joins. A couple of types of clamp, just these small ones, which are good for sort of attaching the top um, to the piece. And then I've used these bigger clamps for when we come to attach the bottom shelf. And these are just adjustable clamps. And there's a make called Silver Line. And these are Rolson ones as well. And they're really handy. A scribe will be needed for when we come to shape the coffee table top. That's just a tool with a nice sharp point at the end. This is actually out of an old electrical kit. But it does the job very well. Scissors and paper um, also for making the template for when we shape the piece. Masking tape again is useful for securing pieces once you've applied the glue and I also use it when I paint the shelf piece to make a sort of handle to hold it with save getting paint on your fingers. And then a couple of grades of sandpaper and I like to cut them into small manageable pieces and I've used a 500 grade and a 120 grade and finally um, a couple of handles and I've used these lovely antique brass this sort of pull ring ring pull rather but you could use a, a just a brass knob or you could even just use a wooden knob um, and just use the, the black and gold paint effect over it. But I think these suit this furniture really well. And I've got these for sale in my Etsy store as well, so I'll pop a link below for those. And I think that's everything you'll need. Quite a big list this time. Okay, let's get started. OK, so we're going to begin by attaching the mouldings to the back and side pieces. So I've just dispensed some glue onto a piece of card and I'm going to apply it with a cocktail stick. So apply glue to the back of the moulding and always choose the neatest side that will be facing forwards. And that's a good habit to get into when you're making furniture. You always want a neat sort of visible edge. And then just press it along the top of the piece so that the top of each piece is flush and you can just feel along with your finger. And the 
second piece. And the same thing again. just got another cocktail stick here, a clean one, and I'm just going to go along there and remove any excess glue, like that. And then you can use clamps for this, but, but just because I've got more of them I use clothes pegs. And just place them, I'm ready to go that way, at each end. And you need to secure mouldings, otherwise as the glue dries, the wood will curl upwards. And a couple in the middle there, and then that can be put to one side to dry. And then exactly the same thing again with your side pieces and side mouldings. Okay, so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the pegs and then I've just been round and on each side just sanded just to make sure that everything's flush. So just go along the sandpaper in one direction rather than rocking back and forth as you'll round off the edges and do that on all sides of the piece. Like I said, I've already done these and then we want to attach a leg to each side of the side pieces. So just pop the back piece there for a moment. I've got my glue here. So apply glue to each side of the side pieces. And then attach a leg to each side so that the top of the leg is flush with the top of the side piece. And just press those together. And then again use your spare cocktail stick just to remove any excess glue from along that join. And then that can be left to one side to dry and you can move on to the second side piece. Okay, so we're now going to make a pencil mark down the short edge of the back piece. And that needs to be in the centre, so just make a pencil mark at the top and bottom. And then turn that and join those lines up. And the same again on these top and bottom pieces. And then with these pieces, go along like that and then just carry the line onto that sort of front edge. And then when we come to place the draw divide, that will help um, position in it. And the same on this piece. And again onto those front and back edges and then take one of the pieces um, this will become the top piece they're both the same size so it doesn't matter which and turn it long ways and you just want to make a pencil mark 30 millimeters back from this front edge and that's one and three sixteenths of an inch And then 
join that up as well. Like that. And I'm using the draw back and this will sort of go inside just so that we don't have to make the drawers as deep as the table and this is just sort of like a draw stop so our drawers will just be that deep and they'll stop there okay so take one of the side pieces and the molded back piece and just apply glue to one end of the back piece And then you want to glue it into place so it's at the front of this back leg or this right hand leg. So it's still attached to the leg but it's towards the front of it and you'll have a couple of millimetres overhang on the back. And once that's glued I'll turn that round and show you what I mean. stick there to remove the excess glue. Make sure that's straight along that back leg. Okay so if I turn that round you'll see as the side piece is towards that front edge so is that back piece and then you've got a nice overhang at the back. So they're both sitting on that inside edge of the leg. And then we want to take what has now become our top piece and so that the pencil lines are facing inwards we're going to glue it along that front edge there. So apply glue to the long back edge and the short edge. Pull the back piece in to meet it so that it's nice and square and that all these sort of edges are, are flush. Just use your finger to press it all together. Remove any excess glue from the inside. And you can lay that piece down flat on your work surface. And press it all together. And then take the sort of draw back back in. Apply glue along one long edge and one short edge. And then you want to join that so it sits behind that line. I'll do it this way round. It'll sit just behind that line like that. And then just use your ruler, you can see that's not quite sitting up right there. And then use your ruler to measure from the front of this leg to the front of this backing piece. And that should be 30 millimetres. And if it's not, just pull it into a, an upright position. Like so. So it's 30 millimetres back. From this front leg. Press that all together. Oops, I've just moved it. Just check that again. Yep. 
Okay, and you want to take the draw divide, and this is going to sit centrally over this front pencil line here. And the reason I tell you to cut um, the draw divide so that the grain is down the shortest edge is because that gives this front edge a neater appearance. The wood that goes against the grain always has sort of a, a bobbly look. So when the pieces show in at the front, always have the grain edge. So again, apply glue to one long and one short edge. And again, pick the nicest edge that's going to be facing forwards. And then this needs to sit centrally over that line. So I'll just roughly place it there. And then the line we drew on the front there will help us to make sure that it's right in the centre. Press that down and then again I'm going to measure. So if you measure from the draw divide to the sort of inside edge of the leg. About 38 and a half there and then at the back and just make sure that you've got the same distance. So that's what it should look like so far. And then we're going to put the bottom piece into place, like so. And that should all fit nice and flushly in there. And this central pencil line that we drew on the front, again, will sit in the centre of that draw divide. So, first of all, apply glue to these inside edges. And then to your um, piece, so one long edge again and one short edge. Place. and just do it carefully so you don't sort of move any of those pieces underneath and then just make sure that that pencil line is sitting right in the centre of the divide there and place it on its side like that and we're going to apply glue along all these edges at the side and this is curling away in the center from the draw divide that's okay because we'll, we'll put some tape on there to hold it all together as the glue begins to dry it tends to want to curl away the, the wood sort of tends to warp so I always advise using clamps or masking tape or both and then we're going to attach this remaining side so that the front edge of this leg is at the front of those two pieces. So that these bottom edges are all flush again as they were on the other side. Just push those up slightly. And you want a nice flush edge along here as well. And all of this can be sanded as well, so if you've got any little um, sort of bits sticking up here and there, we can sand them away to make a nice flush piece. So I'm just pressing it all together. And then I'm going to put some masking tape around these sides just to hold it all in place while the glue begins to dry. So we put it right over the end and put it quite firmly, just trying not to push out these top and bottom pieces. Like that, and I'm going to put another piece over that back um, section. 
You can never use too much masking tape, so just add it until it feels all nice and sturdy. And you can see everything pressing together. And then I'm going to finally put a piece over there to make sure that the top and bottom are sticking to that drawer divide. So attach it at the bottom. And then again, quite tightly, and over the other side. Okay, so while the coffee table is drying, we can shape the coffee table top and the shelf piece. So cut a piece of paper that is the same size as the piece, and then fold it into quarters. And then along the sort of open edge there, just make a pencil mark 5 millimetres or 13 sixty-fourths of an inch from that edge, just like that. And then along this sort of long edge, just make a curve. So from the centre there, curving down and then just up to that line. And it doesn't need to be too deep there, just a couple of millimetres. And then cut that out. Like that. And then open that out and that will be the template. So just use pencil to draw that onto the piece of wood. Like that. And on the other side, and then keep that template to do the shelf piece. And then take the scribe, and we're just going to score that pencil line into the wood. And this just helps the craft knife stay on track when we come to cut it out. So you're not trying to cut through, you're just making a bit of a groove where the pencil line is. And do that on each curve. Like that. And then I put a new blade into my craft knife. And I always do when I'm doing um, mouldings. And it just helps. Um, cut them out and just always be aware as well of where your fingers are when you're doing this Just be really careful don't rush at it I use this technique quite a lot I find it quite effective and it's worth practicing um, just on a piece of spare wood before you actually cut into the the piece that you're going to use so just score along Don't want it to take that corner off there. So just cut through. And we're cutting with the grain so it's always a bit easier. Like that. And like that. And then, if you follow my tutorials, you'll know that I always cut my sandpaper into small pieces, make them more manageable. And you just want to sweep it along each curve that you've cut out, just along the edge of the wood. Just to smooth the cut. And then when you've done them, you then want to curve the edge of the wood over so from front to back just sweeping the sandpaper over the edge and at that corner as well and get rid of that um, sharp corner as well just by sweeping the paper over it and I'm just using a fine grade sandpaper here a 500 which is very soft That way you're not taking away from the actual size of the wood, you're just shaping it 
so go over all the sides and then turn over and do the same on the back so you're creating a sort of rounded edge take your time with it and you don't want to drastically change the shape so just a little bit at a time And then when you've smoothed all the edges on that and you're happy with it, you can then cut your shelf piece in exactly the same way. Okay, so the coffee table top and shelf piece are now shaped and sanded, and I'm happy with those. And the table's had enough time to dry, so I've removed the tape and I sanded um, the top, so in circular motions, just to make sure that all the edges were flush and then I sanded along the front as well again in circular motions and that's just to ensure that the draw divide is flush with the front of the drawers and another check you can do and probably not on your cutting mat because it's probably not completely straight but put it on a flat surface and, and just try and rock it just to make sure that all the legs are exactly the same length because we're attaching the shelf to the bottom we need that to be um, the same length so that we get a square opening in here and if you find that it's rocking on one side then you just want to very gently sand the opposite leg and that will then straighten it out you can do that with any piece of furniture it's always a good idea to put it on a flat surface and check that it's not rocking okay so I'm actually going to apply glue now to the top of the table And then I've got a spreader here, I'm just going to move that around with. Make sure it goes all to the edges, like that. And then take your top piece, and again, these should be pretty much even, but you want the nicest edge facing upwards. So have your the edge that you don't want facing upwards. Um, sort of facing upwards at this stage, if that makes sense, and then put your table down onto it and you just want to check that you've got an even overhang at either side and at the front and back. So that table needs to be central in the middle of the table top. and press it all together until you're happy that it's in the right place and then just use a cocktail stick to remove the excess glue from around the edges and then just keep checking that it's staying where it should and I've cut off some pieces of masking tape here ready and I'm just going to put them around the sides and onto the top and I'll do that side first and I'm still making sure that it's staying in the right place a bit more glue coming out there It's all looking pretty even still, and then I'll put another piece there, pull it quite tightly onto the top, like that. And I'm going to fill in these spaces here. And then, as you can see, it's trying to lift away. So at the front, I like to use um, clamps. And these plastic ones are really nice and tight, so I'm going to put those right at the edges 
to stop it from lifting away from the legs in the corner there. Like that. I'll put a couple in the middle as well. And then the same around that back edge. I'm going to use a bit more tape and just press it down and pull that round quite tightly. And the same there. And then just have a quick look round and make sure that nothing's lifting up. And if it is, just add a bit more tape. Okay, so once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape. And then when you remove it, it may just pull up a few splinters on the top there. So just use a fine grade sandpaper to smooth that off. And then when we attach the shelf, we're only going to have a very sort of small area in the middle there. And we won't be able to get in there and paint. So I want to paint first before we attach the shelf piece. So we just want to paint one side of the shelf. And I've sanded that again with a fine grade sandpaper to prepare it for paint and the underside of the table and just the inside edges of these legs. Now we won't be creating the gold effect in there but once it's joined anyway it's hardly going to be noticeable in there so that will look fine. So when you're painting just one side of a piece of wood so you've got something to hold it with you can create a little um, handle from masking tape so just Put a piece on the back there and create a loop like that and then stick it together and then just use an extra little piece at each end probably a bit too much there just tear that in half just to hold that end down and then you've got something to hold as you paint it and then once it's painted you can prop it up on that to dry so I'm using this um, pitch black paint so once the paint has dried you just want to apply a blob of glue to the bottom of each leg And then remember we're going painted side to painted side. And then just by eye, you just want to attach that so that the legs are in the corners and you've got that even overhang at all sides. So make sure it's within the sort of the pattern on all sides there. And then check at the back as well. And I just want to get rid of some of the excess glue. Okay, and then to secure this, I'm actually going to use these adjustable clamps. Now you should just be able to find these on eBay or in any DIY store, I think. And the make on this one is Silverline. So maybe just put a search in on Google. And these are really handy. And you just put them over. And then you use this adjustable button here to size them. And then use the sort of press handle to tighten them up. So I don't want to do it completely tight yet. So I'm just going to do that corner and then this corner. corners like that and then I can again leave that until the glue has completely dried and then we can attach our feet okay so once the glue has dried and you've removed your clamps we can now attach the feet and before we attach them I just want to just very slightly bevel um, each end of the foot just to take away from that sort of harsh squareness I don't know if you can see that there but to do that just hold the piece against a sheet of sandpaper on your worktop and you just want to lift the back end just very slightly um, probably about a millimetre 
and then just sweep it towards you Maybe that sort of three times and then turn it over and do the opposite side and then do the remaining two edges and because we're constructing quite a sort of elegant looking piece we don't want too many sort of harsh square edges and this just takes away from that So not a great change, but just a tiny little chamfer at the bottom of each foot. That will make all the difference. So just apply a little bit of glue to the bottom of each foot, to the flat edge. Or probably the top, I should say. And then we're just going to attach these by eye. So brush off any sort of sanding dust that might be there. And then it needs to be exactly below that leg so if you get it into position first of all from the side and then turn and make sure that you're in the right place at the front and attach the remaining feet And then remove any remaining glue around the outside edges. Okay, and then while they're drying, we can construct the drawers. Now, in the cutting list, I advise not to cut the pieces needed until after construction, and that's just because um, misplacement of any of these pieces, um, the central divide or the shelf piece may be slightly lower, will affect the size of the drawer opening. So I always say construct the piece first and then remeasure and you know adjust the sizes accordingly. And you just measure your width, your height, and your depth. And then I normally knock off less than half a millimetre, and that's just so that the drawer slides in and out nicely. And then when you add paint, you're also adding a bit of width there. Um, a layer of paint can add you know, a fraction of a millimetre, but it will affect the size of the drawer and you'll find that you won't be able to get them in. So that's that's just why I advise to do that. So to construct the drawer, just begin by applying glue along the short outer edges of the base piece. And then attach the side pieces. those into place like that and then just leave those to dry for a few minutes and I've got one here that I did earlier and then you can apply glue to the front and back edges and then attach your front and back pieces and if you haven't allowed the glue to dry for too long on the sides you should just be able to gently maneuver them upwards so that they're in a straight line with the edges of the front and back pieces and then press that all together to one side to dry and when it's dry we can sand off all the edges to make sure we've got a nice flush drawer. So once the glue on the drawers is completely dried you can sand the drawers on all edges so going along the sandpaper in just one direction and I've already done these so I'm just showing you the technique here on all sides like that and then again on the top and bottom and on the top and bottom do it in a sort of small circular motion 
and that'll just make a nice sort of flush draw and then just keep checking that they go in slot in nicely should be a nice smooth action like that and then they should just tap out like that and if they're sticking a bit you can just go back to your sandpaper and just do a little bit at a time until they fit snugly into the unit so now we're ready to paint and to create the sort of black on gold effect we begin with our gold and I'm using this Rustin's gold paint and just make sure you give it a good shake and a stir before you use it because the sediment tends to sit at the bottom and you won't get a nice colour and I've just dispensed a little bit here into a lid and with the gold don't go over the whole piece but you just want to highlight areas sort of like edges so edges of legs um, edges of this top and anywhere you know that might sort of get natural wear and tear Do a bit on the edge of the feet there on the edge of the top and you can as well go along the edge of the shelf that we've already sort of started in black so I've done the gold now all around the edges there of the table and on the drawers I did the, the entire drawer front no need to do anywhere else because obviously that can't be seen and this paint is touch dry in 30 minutes um, but it says apply another coat after two hours well, this has been about three now so I'm now going to apply the black paint and I'm going to do that all over the piece and then once that's dry we can then sand away to reveal the gold beneath so once you've allowed enough time for the paint to dry just take a small piece of fine grade uh, sandpaper this is a 500 grade and just begin to take away the paint um, at the edges so where you put the gold and you don't need to rub too hard you see there it just starts coming away and that's the sort of look we want so just do a little bit at a time on the corners and do the edges of the feet there as well So when you're happy that you've removed enough paint, you're happy with the gold that you've got showing through there and on the drawers as well, you can apply a coat of clear um, varnish and I'm using a satin varnish, it's a quick dry one and when you're using clear varnish you always sort of dispense a bit into a, a pot and I normally sort of put a couple of um, level teaspoons full and I just keep this teaspoon in my toolbox just for this um, just to do this with and then when you've finished if you've got anything left in the pot don't tip it back in the tin because you'll um, contaminate the the varnish in the tin and it will always sort of be a bit murky so let's pop that to one side and you only need to do the draw fronts your varnish may look a bit milky when it goes on but it will just dry and give it that satin finish that we're after pop that there to dry okay so once the varnish is completely dried our last job is to attach the drawer handles and I'm using this lovely antique brass 
handle with this sort of ring pull. They look really good with this um, colour furniture. So just make a faint uh, pencil mark in the centre of your drawer. Don't do a dot because that tends to dent the wood. So you just want to do a very faint pencil line. And then these handles can actually be attached with the um, Gorilla Wood glue. I'm sure any sort of PVA you're using would also work. I don't like to use super glue because that can tend to leave a sort of shiny residue around the handle which can be seen. And then these have got this handy little ring here that you can hold them with but if, you, if you're if you using a draw knob or something you could use tweezers which might help it um, help you place them. And then just make sure the centre of the handle is just in the centre of your pencil line and also that it's straight there as well and then before the glue is completely dry just measure again each side to check that you've got the same amount and I just need to push that over a little bit so always just keep measuring make sure you're in the right place 14 and 14 and then when you're sure you're central and I'm just placing it sort of top and bottom by eye that looks like I've got about the right amount at each edge and then you can press it into place and finally you can just put your drawers into place and if you find that you've got dust um, from your work table on it you can just use a bit of polish and a duster. Just give that a wipe off. And there is our completed coffee table. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so please do subscribe to the channel and also do have a look at the um, Doll's House Diary and the living room um, which I think is part two And then when we've got a few more pieces of furniture, I'll put them all in and we'll start doing the displaying. For now, thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.